Welcome back. Uh, today we're going to continue looking at some of the physics that's involved in martial arts. As you can see, I have a rope in my hand. Well, today we're going to try to answer the question, should you strike like a whip? This is a metaphor that's used by many in the martial arts when uh, explaining to students how to appropriately strike. And along the way, we're going to try to better understand the role relaxation plays. We're going to look at tension and we're going to try to uh, understand is tension a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Is there a middle ground? So we're going to explore this physical model and look at exactly what's going on with regards to wave mechanics. And along the way, not only are we going to make comparisons to how this can apply to our martial arts, but we're also going to look at the differences. And it's critical you do that whenever you're looking at any physical model because uh, for instance, in this case, we're not a rope, so we need to understand what's different about this situation. And that will make us much uh, better equipped at taking the lessons that we have learned in integrating them into our martial arts. So, I have Zach here to help out. We have our rope. Let's get started looking at some wave energy. Now, uh, there's a very simple comparison we can make right away. I'm holding this rope. I initiate on this end and I send a pulse down until it reaches Zach. I'm going to have Justin step out here so that he can send a pulse down and we can look at what's going on and see how it compares to our martial arts techniques. Again, he initiates from this end and what happens? Through sequential activation, the additional elements of the rope are brought into motion until ultimately the wave reaches Zach. And now the wave does rebound. We're not going to worry about that for our analysis today. Uh, not that there aren't some implications that we could take from that as well. Uh, How's this compared to our striking? Well, when we strike, don't we very often, there's different methods of striking, but typically we initiate from the ground. We have a ground reaction force. From there, we engage the waist. We start bringing some muscles from the trunk into play, musculature from the arm. So there's sequential activation, there's sequential motion. The energy is initiated from one end until ultimately it extends out the other end and impacts with our opponent. So you can see why this comparison is, is very often made. Now we want to better understand tension. One of the simplest things that we can look at uh, right away is, is tension a bad thing? Now in this rope, if we get some waves traveling down it and then suddenly we pull tight, we've sort of flatlined our waves, so to speak. And in our striking, we're familiar with the concept, if you tighten up unnecessarily before impact. That's a key word there, unnecessarily. See, it's inappropriately applied tension, as we'll discover, uh, that will have an adverse effect on our energy transfer, on our impact with our opponent. So we have one instance where tension is a bad thing. Now, to better understand the role tension plays, we're going to ask a very important question, and it's one that we've sort of been discussing a little in our past lessons. How can we maximize the speed here? Now we know from our, our previous videos we want to do two very important things in our striking. Uh, one is to maximize the mass behind your strike and the other is to maximize the speed of that mass. That's going to create uh, the maximum impact. So what goes into maximizing our wave speed? To answer this question I want you to imagine that when, as the pulse initiates, go ahead, send a pulse down. As the pulse initiates, I want you to imagine that we're traveling along the pulse as it travels to Zach. So at some instant in time, the rope may look like this. And what we're going to do now is head to the whiteboard. We're going to look at this snapshot and we're going to explore the forces that are involved and see uh, what exactly goes into determining the speed and how can we manipulate it to maximize the speed. So let's head over to our whiteboard. Here's our, our snapshot. We have something that looks like this. Not the most balanced, but you get the idea. So here's our little mass element that we're looking at. And at this instant in time, there's a tension pulling back on that little tiny section of rope. And there's also another tension pulling forward. And what we can do is we can take these tensions out and we can break them into components. We can break them into parts so that now we have both a vertical and a horizontal component. And what do you notice? Right away you should notice that the horizontal components cancel each other out. And the vertical components do what? They add together. And 
you can take that understanding and, and apply a little bit of trigonometry. We're going to skip the mathematical rigor today. But if you take what we understand here, again, with some, some trigonometry, and you apply Newton's second law, which, as I said, we're going to sort of skip the math. We're going to get right to the end result. I just want you to understand what goes into uh, determining it just uh, on a conceptual level. We're taking some of the lessons we've already looked at. Well, the speed then is going to be equal to the square root of, have you guessed it, the tension divided by, I'm going to introduce a new term here. This is a mu, and it means the mass per unit length. And this, is, this should seem logical. If you're accelerating a certain segment of mass into motion, there's got to be a force involved. In our case, it's the tension. And what's going to determine how fast that, that section of rope is accelerated? Well, we also have to consider the mass. And since we're not accelerating the whole mass into motion at once, we're going to look at something called the, the uh, mass per unit length of the rope. The, the, uh, mass density, okay? So this is our equation. What does it tell us? Tension's a pretty important thing. See, we, we discovered early on, inappropriately applied tension is bad. But it's appropriately applied tension that can help you maximize your speed. And again, if we make a comparison with our striking, it's the same thing. Uh, we want to activate the appropriate musculature. There's different methods of doing this. We're not going to get into specifics. Um, but activation of appropriate muscles, appropriate muscle tension, can enhance the acceleration of your uh, strike. Now, to see this in action, just to demonstrate it with our rope, if I pull up on this mass segment that's in my hand, this little section I'm holding on to, what does that do? It applies the tension on the next segment. And so, as I pull up, we send a wave down. Now, if I accelerate this section faster, what's going to happen? The tension increases, and so does the wave speed. Now for the important question, really critical question, whenever you look at any physical model, what are the differences? Well, I'm gonna have Justin come back here. He initiates a wave, sends a wave down, down the, the rope. Ultimately, the energy, the pulse, reaches Zach and it rebounds off. If this were a whip, we maximize speed by putting as much initial tension into the system until that energy extends down the end of the whip and impacts with our opponent. The important question is what is this mass that's left behind? Whether it's a whip or a rope, what is it doing? Is it adding anything into the impact? And again, send a pulse. Well, th this section isn't doing anything. It's left behind. It's not enhancing the impact. It's not backup mass, and that's a key difference in our striking. See, when we strike, we initiate from the ground, and then what happens as we start to engage the waist and activate those additional muscles, what's happening? We're bringing more mass into motion. And that mass, much like the bump, uh, a collision with a car, when we impact with our fists, that's like the bumper of a car, but we have backup mass. The rope doesn't, in our case, when a car collides with an object, is it the bumper that does the damage? No, it's the mass that's behind the bumper. And that's a lesson I learned uh, from watching a, a seminar with a well-known grandmaster. Uh, but it's a lesson that pertains very much to uh, comparing this model with our actual striking methods. So the question then that we're trying to answer, should we strike like a whip? Well, uh, in many ways, no. In a future video, we're going to come back and, and explore this a little bit more because one of the systems that we, we teach is White Crane Kung Fu, which uses shaking power, which is much more closely related uh, to this particular model. But when you're looking at standard striking, uh, no. This is an excellent model to illustrate the principles of relaxation, to illustrate how tension comes into play and maximizing speed. So it's a, it's a good model to look at to try to understand some basic principles, but you have to understand that... Uh, not everything from this model carries over into combat. This doesn't have the backup mass that we do in our strikes, uh, nor can this accelerate into the crash like a car could, like our striking could. All right, so that'll be it for this lesson. I hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you soon. Take care.